Rational Zero Theorem. Write polynomials as a product of linear factors. Let's talk about the Rational Zero Theorem. If a polynomial function, written in descending order, now that's really important, it has to be in descending order, has integer coefficients, then any rational zero must be in the form p divided by q, where p is a factor of the constant term and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Well, p is a factor of the constant term, and our constant term is 4, okay? So p equals factors of 4. Well, our factors are 4 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Because 1 times 4 is 4, negative 1 times negative 4 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and so on. So then let's look at our factors for q. Q is the factor of the leading coefficient. So that's this guy. And it so happens to be Q equals a factor of 1, factors of 1. And that would be plus or minus 1. So any rational 0 must be in the form of P divided by Q. So let's see what that looks like. P divided by Q. Well, P is plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 1. Remember, it's a fraction. So it could be, our rational zeros could be plus or minus 1. We also have plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1, which gives us plus or minus 2. Because remember, a whole number divided by 1 is itself. Our last choice is plus or minus 4 divided by plus or minus 1. So that would be plus or minus 4. So really, our rational possible now, possible rational zeros are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, or plus or minus 4. And we're going to use synthetic division to figure out which one of these works. Since we know these are our possible zeros, um, let's see which ones actually work. So we're going to use synthetic division. So first, let's try negative 1. So I'm going to make my synthetic division symbol here. 1, 1, negative 4, and negative 4. So I'm going to bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. That adds to 0. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. That adds to negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is 4. And that adds to 0. So um, negative 1 is one of my zeros. Okay? That means that's um, one of my x-intercepts. So at this point, I'm going to say this is x squared plus 0x minus 4. Remember, it has to be in descending order. And so I know this 0 goes with the x. Well, this is the same thing as saying x squared minus 4 equals 0. Well, I can factor that one. That's x minus 2 times x plus 2, which equals 0. So my next two um, roots are x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. And you'll notice those were two of my possibilities also. If I had tried 4 or negative 4 or positive 1, I would not have gotten a 0 here. It only works when I get a 0 right here. So if I was going to write this in linear um, form, that would be x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 1. We can say that equals y or equals 0. So this has to be x plus 1 because x plus 1 equal to 0, x equals negative 1, which is one of my roots. So let's try a couple. Write each polynomial as a product of linear factors. Now we're going to pretend that I can't use the calculator for this, okay? So what we're going to do is this is my p, and this happens to be 1, is my q. So the factors of p since I need factors of 18, are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 9, and plus or minus 18. My factors of Q are just plus or minus 1. So when I divide these, basically all of my possible zeros are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 9, and plus or minus 18. So we need to try all of these to figure out which ones are 0. 
I kind of worked ahead and I happen to know that positive three is one of my zeros. So I'm going to put a three here. I'm going to use synthetic division to prove it. So I'm going to have one, negative four, negative three, and positive 18. I'm going to bring the one down, take three times one is three. I add down, negative four plus three is negative one. Three times negative one is negative three. Negative three plus negative three is negative six. And three times negative six is negative 18. So when I add down, I get my magical zero. So that shows that three is one of my roots. So since I have to write this as a product of linear factors, I'm just gonna do it right away. So when I look at this, I know that's x squared minus one x minus six. And I'm gonna factor that guy right away because I happen to know that it factors into x minus three times x plus two. And how I know that is negative three times two is negative six. And negative three plus two is negative one. So my other zeros are at three and negative two. But we already have a three, but it so happens to be a double zero or multiplicity two and then x plus two. And we'll make that equal to y. So we just wrote the polynomial as a product of linear factors. 